The city of Dunedin, Florida wants to take this man's home. Because I was tardy cutting the grass. Jim Ficken's mom died, so he went to South Carolina to take care of her estate. City officials then started fining Ficken $500 a day because his grass had grown longer than 10 inches. Such fines add up. This is a letter from the city attorney demanding $24,454. Now the fine's up to $30,000. That's asinine. Ficken's neighbor can't believe he was fined so much. Just for grass. Because Ficken doesn't have 30000 the city says it will foreclose on his home to collect the fine. I was shocked. The town says you're kind of a public nuisance. I got everything fixed and, took care and taken care of. But you only get it fixed after they send warning after warning, the neighbors complain. I guess I'm kind of a slob. Why don't you just pay the fine? $30,000. Do you have $30,000 lying around? In every instance that the city asked him to do something, Jim did it. Lawyer Ari Bargles defending Ficken against Dunedin. The city has gone nuclear. $500 per day for the violation of having tall grass, and now he's facing the loss of his home. Dunedin's politicians wouldn't talk to us. Instead, they paid $25,000 to this public relations firm to speak to the media. The new PR manager costing taxpayers $25,000 for just one month. The PR firm says Dunedin has no desire to impose large fines. Their goal is just to ensure that Dunedin's a high quality community. But if the politicians only cared about the quality of the laws, they could have done what their own ordinances permit them to do, which is hire a, a lawn service to come out and mow the grass and send Jim a bill for 150 bucks. But they didn't they, do that. They could do that. They absolutely can do that, but they didn't do that. And that's because they prioritize revenue collection. They want the money. It's pretty apparent that code enforcement is a major cash cow for the city of Dunedin. 11 years ago, Dunedin collected $34,000 in fines. Last year, 1.3 million. I got violated for a lawnmower in my yard. They violated me for a hole the size of a quarter in my stucco. They, they find people that they can pick on, and then they keep picking on them. Dunedin put a lien on her house. They say she owes them $32,000. I, mean, I can't tell you how many sleepless nights I've had because of the city of Dunedin. Just trying to think of what to say to them, just, just like have them leave me alone. The city is just a bunch of bullies, and they expect people not to stand up to them because to stand up to him requires expensive legal help. Ficken managed to get that legal help for free from the Institute for Justice, a law firm that defends individuals abused by government. Its lawyers, portraying themselves in this video as Western heroes ready to punish bad guys, say many cities now pad their budgets by imposing excessive fines. The North Carolina city fined a local church $100 a branch for excessive tree pruning. Private citizens are being essentially extorted by their governments um, and fined incredible amounts of money for really, really small violations. And if you can't pay the fine, they'll take your home. The city of Dunedin Code Enforcement Board authorized the city attorney's office to file foreclosure actions. The city attorney of Dunedin in the last year has sought permission to foreclose on 18 properties. That violates the Eighth Amendment, says the Institute for Justice. It not only protects us from cruel and unusual punishment, but right next to that in the Eighth Amendment is a protection uh, to be free from excessive fines. Our founders, they recognize that the ability to fine is the ability to cripple. Um, and it's one of the ways, other than incarceration, that government can really oppress. If governments can, they will. So we should be grateful for the Eighth Amendment. It protects us from excessive fines. And what's more excessive than politicians taking your home because you didn't cut your grass? <laughs>